In the 70s, the threat came not from outer space, but from the murky depths of our own world. We went swimming and were attacked by sharks and piranhas. We put a down payment on a house and the walls dripped blood. We took a canoe trip and were raped and murdered by retarded hillbillies. Everywhere, the modern dream was turning to a nightmare. The question asked by all 70s films is, is the same as that old thing you saw in, in annuals as a kid, where they'd show you a picture of a, a small town and then ask you, what's wrong with this picture? That's basically what all, all of the really good 70s horror movies do. They show you America and then ask you what's wrong with it. That's why we have the small town in Halloween, which uh, harbors the, the mad killer. That's why we have the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That's why we have the Exorcist. Just a perfect day Drink sangria in the park And then later When it gets dark we go home After World War II, suburbia came into being because there was a giant push to normalcy. That normalcy was the, the issue. Let's all get normal again. Oh, it's such a perfect day A lot of horror films in the past set their movies in a haunted house or some dark environment to begin with so that you're immediately alerted to the fact, oh, this is going to be scary. Well, the harder thing to do then is to take a horror movie and put it in a suburban atmosphere with nice little row houses and beautiful manicured lawns and some place that you assume is very safe. Because if horror can get there, it can get anywhere. Suburbia is supposed to be, your house is supposed to be safe. It's supposed to be a sanctuary. Nowadays, Maybe, maybe because of conditions beyond our control, there is no sanctuary. And I think that's in the audience's mind. So a filmmaker, if he plays with that, he can, he can create fear. Lots of fear.
about his function. Be restrained. You let him out? The primary concern is that we stop him. I can't stop until I'm certain he's dead. He was my patient for 15 years. He became an obsession with me until I realized that there was nothing within him, neither conscience nor reason, that wasn't even remotely human. An hour ago, I stood up and, and fired six shots into him. He just got up and walked away. Couldn't have shot him six times. Think I'm lying, Sheriff? I think you missed him. No man could take six months. I told you this isn't a man. It's the unconscious mind. We're all afraid of the dark inside ourselves. we know that these are people doing this, slaughtering people, and uh, the question is why. In the United States since 1977, serial killings have risen enormously, and something's going on. People will go to a movie if they're disturbed, and whatever they see, whether it's a comedy, or whether it's a Western, or whether it's a horror movie, they will incorporate some of that into their thinking. I had a telephone call about six months ago from a guy who wanted to meet the shape from Halloween. And the secretary told him it was an actor. He said, no, 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 I want to meet the guy, Michael Myers. I want to meet the character who's killed all these people. So the difference between fantasy and reality in this guy's mind was a very thin bridge. Normalcy can be destructive to the imagination, to creativity, to the intellect, to the soul. The only way we grow as people is through confronting our dark side, because if you, all you want is the quiet and the safety, you're giving up reality.